When I'm cooking dishes, I love to have some of my ingredients ready to go. So when I need them, I know where they are. They're at my fingertips. The French call this mise en place. I call it preparation or pre-preparation. By having this ready, I can add a little bit at a time. I can build the flavors. It gives me that opportunity to taste as I go to be able to finish the dish. I'm cleaning what are called beards out of these muscles. I'm using a, a set of tweezers which make light work of it. I just grab on and pull them. The muscles that won't release the beard easily, I'll separate out and I'll use those ones to make a lovely muscle stock. The next dish that I prepare is gonna be just more play on classic cooking technique when it comes to mussels. A bit of heat, a bit of liquid, a bit of steam, hopefully lots of flavor, and serving them in a timely fashion. The thing with mussels is they, they don't have a lot of mass. So once they're cooked, they cool off really, really fast. Butter, garlic, garlic. Wine. Cream. And a lid to help them steam. And go some kelp. Some of the lettuce that we harvested yesterday is showing signs of wilting. Now I've got a trick that will fix that. Believe it or not, by putting it in warm water, not cold water, I can bring this back to life. I've got this water approximately 90 degrees. I'm gonna leave the lettuce in there for at least half an hour. I'm gonna remove it from the water and then put it in the fridge. And it should come out freshly picked crisp. I'm always so pleased with my trick of using the warm water to refresh greens. Works like a charm every time. It's time for me to learn about this milkweed. Blanching and refreshing greens is something so common in the regular kitchen. Vegetables of all sorts, carrots, cauliflower, spinach, you will cook in a boiling salted water and then so you can stop the cooking process immediately, you drop them into iced water. There is so much flavor in that. It is exactly opposite of what everything I know as a cook told me would happen. I was expecting the flavor to wash away, but not at all. It's intensified. I'm gonna do exactly what Les told me, and I'm gonna blanch them again, see where that takes me. Here comes round number two. Now it tastes like a cooked vegetable. This is giving me a chance to layer flavors. Production time. Nothing is better with soup than some good old campfire bread. So I want something delicious to go with the bread, and I know these little cedar buds are super powerful. I think if I add them to butter and I can flavor butter with them, they'll be just perfect. It's called compound butter. I can just literally squish these guys up using my fingers. I've made many, many flavored butters before. It gives me or any home cook the ability to add flavor to a dish, but componently. I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic.
I'm taking out the fine bones from the fillet of the smallmouth bass. These guys are dangerous. When people eat them, they easily can get these stuck in their throats. A bit of diligence is an important thing right now. All right. Cattail. I'm going to use this stuff because of the cucumber flavor to make a salad. That's going to go with the bass. And I'm going to cut this stuff quite fine. A simple salad, oil, vinegar, salt. Now I'm adding a little bit of vinegar. It's going to work well. The dish I'm going to make for less for the main course is a super simple one. I want to showcase the bass. I'm going to carefully pan sear it. In the same pan that the fish is cooked in, I'm going to make a beer blanc, which is essentially a buttercream sauce. French cuisine at its finest with a cabin twist. Sweet fern in there for basting. Just want to extract some of the, the flavor out of that. Leeks, shallots. Time for some good Ontario Chardonnay. The acid in the wine cleanses the pan of all sorts of caramelizations of the fish that have taken place in the cooking process. Cream. I know the French don't do this very often, at least not that I know of, but I'm gonna put some cattail flour into the sauce. I think the flavor is gonna work so well, adding a nuttiness to it, but I also think it might help me thicken it. Time for the corn. Open this up. Have as much surface area exposed as possible. Combination of sweet gale and sweet fern. So the syrup that I have cooking right now, if all goes well, it should totally accentuate the flavor of the blueberries. One thing with these hazelnuts is they've got these fine hairs. Um, after doing many, they, they tend to get annoying, like they get embedded in your skin a little bit. Kind of like stinging nettle, but not quite as bad. Last one. Right now I'm making a sour cream whipped cream. My plan is to take hazelnuts that have been cooked in browned butter. I'm gonna add the butter to this to give it a really good shortbread flavor. And the hazelnuts are going to give it a really nice crunch. I think the trick is not to hit these too hard. Do you know what really blows me away? Is the amount of stuff that Les has brought me. Unbelievable. These guys are almost done. Next step is time for fire. I want to crisp up some of this reindeer moss in the brown butter. Fun dessert. I'm doing a play on a classic Austrian dessert. I think it's pronounced Kaiserschmarrn. Traditionally, it would be served with preserved fruit. In this case, I've made uh, a gastrique out of the rose hips, and that's going to be my fruit flavor profile for this. I'm just going to tighten this batter up a little bit more, and then I'm going to add some cream. I'm gonna let it stand for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna get the pan ready.
got some blue cheese, some Canadian blue cheese, that I'm gonna introduce to this dessert. You brought a tree in the house. I did bring a tree in the house. It's tea time. And I think what I'd like to do is make some iced tea. We want to just brew it nicely at a nice temperature, not put on the hot boiling water and shock the, 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 the stems here. So I'm just going to do this kind of action. Oh, maybe that's not going to work. Let's try this. <laughs> well, it worked. <laughs> yeah, what are you working on? Um, for sure, in the world of bitter, I just need intense flavor. So if it's intensely bitter, I need to balance it out with either intensely sweet or intensely acidic. Smell this, Kevin. Whoa. Isn't that nice? Wow. Now, I think most people prefer to put honey in their tea, usually in their actual cup. I don't. I actually like to put honey into the pot when I first put the tea in and let it steep with the honey in there. Maybe it does nothing. But I always feel like it just tastes a little better. It's like it mellows the honey out as well as uh, bruise the twigs. <laughs> 